Welcome to Good News Week and the big news, beast! A beast! That's right, a beast! A monster, a beast! The Hawkesbury River in Sydney is home to an aquatic beast related to Scotland's legendary Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. In fact, it sometimes teams up with the Blue Mountains Panther to protect the Shire from aliens. Don't believe me? Have a look at this. Undeniable proof! <laughs> a giant, endangered, aquatic beast living peacefully in Australian waters. Don't tell Japan. <laughs> uh, a man by the name of Rex Gilroy has compiled hundreds of sighting reports. Some of them from other people. <laughs> Most... <laughs> Most of the sightings tend to occur around the Mooney Mooney area. Just outside the Mooney Mooney pub. <laughs> and always, uh, just a little after closing time. <laughs> He's taken his wife out on hundreds of trips to try and catch the monster, but it refuses to take the bait. <laughs> yeah. So now he's thinking of taking someone else's wife. <laughs> the creature may be the Moiliwonk, mentioned in Aboriginal folklore. Moiliwonk is a traditional word meaning gullible white bloke. <laughs> the Moiliwonk loves dancing and sometimes, if you listen carefully, you can hear it doing the truly ruly, hooly dooly, Moiliwonk, honky tonk, hanky panky, mooney mooney stomp. Yeah. Feel the love. Yeah. Ah, anyone remember the Iraq War? <laughs> No? Yes? We won, right? Pulled out in glorious victory? Yes? No? Baghdad still has a little suicide bomber problem, so they're going to build a massive wall around the entire city. Yeah. Well, it works so well in Israel. <laughs> and if there's one thing a suicide bomber can never destroy, it's a wall. <laughs> After a series of attacks, Baghdad's governor has proposed a barrier that's uh, 4.5 metres high, 112 kilometres long, and impossible to breach, unless you're some kind of rocket. <laughs> Construction will take about a year, and to prevent attacks while it's being built, another wall will be built slightly further out. <laughs> but don't worry, the construction of that wall will be protected by yet another wall, uh, which will in turn be protected by a series of three more walls, with Baghdad at the centre, like a nice big target. <laughs> In retaliation, hardcore extremists are working on a mysterious and devastating terrorist device known as a ladder. <laughs> Julia Gillard has done it. She's pulled a rabbit out of a hole in the ground. <laughs> the new Prime Minister took just over a week to resolve a bitter two-month fight with the mining industry. At this rate, she'll stop the boats, revive the ETS, and personally check the insulation in every roof <laughs> by the end of the month. Uh, Gillard broke a deal, and all it cost was $1.5 billion. $1.5 billion. This means we'll get more superannuation when we retire, but we will have to work a couple of days a week down the mines. <laughs> Some critics say Gillard allowed the miners to take advantage of her, but really, during a honeymoon period, you expect to be screwed one way or another. <laughs> One thing's for sure, it's election time, Australia, when voters can decide which one of Gillard or Abbott they want to run the country until their party gets sick of them. <laughs> it's Julia versus Tony, the woman who smashed the glass ceiling versus the man who's praying to God to miraculously tape it back together again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Although, you know, there's no, there's no real need for an election. I think we all know who's running the country. Yeah? Yeah? The guys in the hard hats with the little lamps on them. <laughs> and that's the good news. <laughs> it's good news.
Thank you. Good evening. Tonight, with Noddy gone and Big Ears worried, the suave sophistication of Mikey Robbins. <laughs> the gentle goodness of Kitty Flanagan. <laughs> and the quiet beauty of Tim Ferguson. <laughs> oh, lean on it. And they're pledging their full support to the dear leader, Claire Hooper. Headlining the Sunshine Coast Comedy Festival this weekend, the finest Englishman on that team, Jeff Green. <laughs> and the myth, the legend, the icon, Arj Barker. Yeah! Oh. Sunshine Coast Comedy Festival. Sunshine Coast, yes. Mm. I've been trapped because I've been doing loads of touring dates. I did a gig with you, didn't I, Mikey? And I never even get a chance to plug a gig because everyone else does, but I'm actually doing the Sunshine Coast with you. We're doing it together. I'm your yeah. driver. Yes, thanks, <laughs> so, so. Because that's one of the great things about, you know, when you come to Australia, you get to tour and see loads of the beautiful parts of Australia. I was in Broken Hill, which is... <laughs> it's not that bad. Honestly, <laughs> it is the middle of nowhere. You put a dollar in a parking meter, you get two days. <laughs> Two days. There's 4,000 people and two surnames in the Broken Hill area. <laughs> yes. People going around going, give me six in Broken Hill. <laughs> <laughs> they would probably ride in if they understood that. <laughs> <laughs> well, have, you, have you actually been? It's like, um, you know, you walk, there's Cobalt Lane and Arsenic Boulevard. And <laughs> I, you need the periodic table to find your way around. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's, so I'm doing that with, uh, with Mikey uh, next week. Oh, good. Hmm. You're looking forward to it? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm Mikey, just... you were brilliant. Oh, and, uh, and you were good on stage as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've got something here from Arj. You have a, a DVD out, I believe. Yeah, I have a brand new uh, DVD coming out, I think in August. But the thing about this is it's called Forever. Why is it called Forever? Well, there's a few reasons why. Number one, entirely non-biodegradable. So, <laughs> you know when you buy, you buy a DVD and like, three or four hundred years later it starts to wear out? <laughs> <laughs> Not with this. It'll last forever. But also, it's a nice name because it's my third DVD in the trilogy, and the other ones are called Balls and Live. So then when you put them together, you have Balls Live Forever. <laughs> and it's just kind of long. <laughs> kind of drags a bit. So. Hey, Paul, I've got a message as well. This is not from me. My uncle texted me from Iceland. Just says, hi, Claire. Could you let Julia know that I would still do her a favour even though she will now have to be bossy? Love, Cam. <laughs> so I just, just wanted to get that message out to Ms Gillard, courtesy of my uncle. I've got his number, if you're interested. <laughs> Actually, I must admit, like, that, that, the past, the past, you know, uh, week or so, with, with, with uh, Julia Gillard taking over, I've been wondering what other hot redhead she reminds me of. I, I clicked the other night while I was watching telly. Lois from Family Guy. <gasps> she looks like the wife from Family Guy, and I find that hot. Wilma from the Flintstones? W yeah, Wilma from the Fl oh, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm getting a whole sort of giggity, giggity, giggity going on here. I, lo I love the fact that the Queen sent uh, Julia a telegram, and uh, uh, Obama sent uh, phoned her, and then Shane, uh, Shane Warne sent her a text. <laughs> So uh, while well, we are doing the big sell, uh, uh, Mr. Ferguson has a book as well. The Cheeky Monkey. The yes. Cheeky Monkey. Oh. Mine, mine's signed by the author. Signed by, signed by the author with a sticker? Yup. <laughs> no, inside with his name. Oh, gorgeous. But I didn't even have to meet him to do it. I just went into the bookstore <laughs> and I asked along with a signature on it and they had one. <laughs> Brilliant. And that one is actually signed with my DNA. If you find a page where it's hard to... <laughs> Pull oh. apart. <laughs> Hold on to that, because in a hundred years you could turn that into an army of me. But, <laughs> but it's, it's a comedy book, it's the Cheeky Monkey, it's got everything that Paul taught me about comedy, which is why it's a thin book. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to write comedy, write to Paul or buy the book. Either way, you get the same deal. What's a, what's a chapter one called? Don't tell Richard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're mining our past now. And, and Kitty, lovely to have you on board. Yes. Yeah. You up to anything? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm touring at the moment. You're well. touring? Yeah, it's been uh, really good. People have been coming. <laughs> so I've really been enjoying that. Um, worked with someone the other day who 
came backstage and they went, oh, you want to look out out there. They're, uh, the audience is uh, pretty white, middle class, and middle aged. And I went, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any problems here. I'm not sure the show's called Flannu from the Ghetto last time. <laughs> so what was happening, Gag? Have you checked out the new Prius, homies? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with a week of her in power, what's your, what's your thoughts about Julia? Baron Spinster's rock on! <laughs> Were you shocked by the news that uh, Kevin had been deposed? I'm happy for the new for the new change, but the whole thing is the miners tax. It's all here, but taxing the miners and the miners and this and that. And I'd say what the big deal is, you know, as adults we pay taxes, and I think it would it would be like educational for them to to like you know to experience that and learn a little bit about it. So then someday, <laughs> like I I think it's like a good learning experience for the miners if they you know like maybe they'll tax them as much, but. I definitely think, you know, I don't read the news that much, but I think, uh, you know, that's what I think. <laughs> Did you want to say something, Jeff? No, it was one of my ventriloquists. Um... <laughs> Our first battleground is seven days and seven seconds. Team versus team over a quick montage of stories from the week. Five points for each correct answer. Opposing teams may challenge if you take too long. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right? Yeah. Let's roll it. Let's roll it. Oh, seven days and seven seconds. It's so sexy. It's the news. Boom, boom, boom. Seven days, seven seconds. Seven seconds. <laughs> Crazy sexy. <laughs> okay, Robinstein, first story. What was that about? Sexy. <laughs> It was about uh, Tiger Airways. Yes, indeed. And the idea that you now have, they want you to uh, basically check yourself in, uh, make your own lunch, and try and fly the plane if you can, just to save money. Oh, I thought they were doing... Aren't they doing stand-up seating? Yes. <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you're right. No, 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 you're right. Ryanair, Ryanair and they're in they're investigating it, and Tiger has said that they'll, in, mm. they'll implement stand-up seating as well if yeah. it works out for Ryanair. And it's where they strap you onto, like, a board. <laughs> 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 They strap you onto a board. It looks like you're going to get the lethal injection, which is probably, <laughs> and probably what you would want if you're flying Tiger Airways. <laughs> but, um, and, and, want... and 20 years from now, it's going to be like those trains in India where you're just on top. <laughs> Seagull! Whoa! <laughs> second story, Rocky. Second story from you. It's a bejeweled glove. Yeah, it was a Michael well. Jackson um, yeah record for Michael Jackson's. They white found uh, they found Michael Jackson's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell us where. <laughs> and it was holding King Tut's penis. <laughs> that's missing too. I won't sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm going to give you uh, that and move away from you for a little while. Uh, next story, third story. Was the third story? Was that the ones where um, some like old, some older people were walking into like a um, it was a forum, a, a, a sports centre? Well, I think it was some older people walking into a sports <laughs> centre. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Five points. points. <laughs> Do we have an answer? Yes, I believe the lady just said older people walking into a sports <laughs> centre. Oh, was it all the old people going into the jacuzzi to dissolve like disparate? <laughs> It was Kevin Rudd's number crunches, running around going, where are the numbers? They've all been crunched. I can't believe no one's got that. I'm shocked and surprised. What is it? What is it? Well, I'll tell you when it's time to tell you. Oh. Uh, it wasn't even your question, Jeff. That's the beautiful thing with their question. But now this is your question. The fourth story, do we have? That, um, was that Tiger Woods? Yes. Tiger Woods and... And his wife, Eden. And, and so it's, it's, there's a divorce happening, and she's getting $750 million and the house, wow. and he gets the car. <laughs> uh, he's already smashed it. He has, yeah. <laughs> That's well, it. Thank actually, you very much. The, the thing is, too, that uh, there were reports she was she was claiming seven hundred and fifty million, but these people have said he's not even worth. Not even worth. He's only that. worth six hundred million, isn't yeah. he? <laughs> Six hundred million is still a lot. I mean, that's more than I make in a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly. Next story. Another flying car. This is the car that's just been reclassified because it uh, didn't satisfy a weight limit to make it into a light aircraft. So it's a small car, and uh, the the Fed have just changed all the rules, and so you can buy it. Yeah, thank you. That is the next story. But we've got a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> Do I just... <laughs> 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 
I got clothes put up my ring. My pencil broke. <laughs> I, th I think you need some points for this round. So, uh, what was that story? Your hair looks nice. <laughs> the fifth story. But the previous ah. story to the plane. No, the oh. Russian spy story. Uh, thank you In very much. Can you explain some of that story? Yeah, but basically, it's, it's a whole bunch of Russians, one of whom, it has to be said, is really hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've basically been working underground in America for years. Designing planes. <laughs> <laughs> underground. Not only that, but they've been checking the neighbourhood. So they've been checking out. So now the Russians know when 7-Eleven opens, it is always open. I mean, these are the kind of informations that have been going to them. <laughs> Actually, Tim, Tim's right. They reckon that in all these years, these people have not gathered one bit of information that the average 12-year-old could get off the internet in an afternoon. <laughs> but it's sleepers. They call them sleepers, so now we know what they've been doing. <laughs> uh, can we just uh, reiterate the flying car story? There's a plane uh, that's also a car, and it's going to be available. People can buy it. That's it. 100% right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to throw the last story open. Does anyone remember? Oh, keep waiting for the G20. Wait for the G20. G20. Oh. Wayne, oh, Swan went, Wayne Swan went to the G20 and he forgot that uh, Julia Gillard was uh, Prime Minister. He called her Deputy Prime Minister. That's oh. it. Yes. So there was a little bit of confusion there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the stories were Tiger Airways, the airline that makes Qantas look reliable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. I remember something in, in the past with um, Ralph Fiennes. Rafe. Rafe. Rafe Fiennes. And Qantas stood for quickies available now in the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if I'm way off. He had to do it before the plane landed. I mean, he just wanted to get it all out of the way and have sex on the plane. He was the English impatient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Settle down, Ralph. Yes. Diger Airways, the airline that makes Qantas look reliable, announces that its customers will now be charged for checking in at the airport. Passengers have to bring their own food and in-flight entertainment and take turns flying the plane. <laughs> Plus, everyone has to chuck in 20 bucks for petrol. <laughs> uh, the second story, at an auction, uh, on the first anniversary of his death, bidders from around the world spent over one million dollars on Michael Jackson memorabilia. A million bucks to remember Michael Jackson. I remember when youngsters were paid that much to forget him. <laughs> Only... <laughs> that. Yeah, saved by the glove. Look at that. <laughs> Only three items were left unsold. Tito, Jermaine and Latoya. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, this is the one everyone couldn't get. Israel's investigation into the botched raid on a Gaza-bound aid flotilla begins. Oh. Unfortunately, 15 minutes in, Israeli commandos boarded the investigation and opened fire. <laughs> the Sorry. panel includes three... Oh. Was that the one that we all thought was old people going to a sports club? Old people going to... <laughs> <laughs> you can see, the, con you can the, see the confusion there. <laughs> uh, the panel includes three international observers. Nobel Peace Prize laureate David Trimble, old. former judge advocate general Ken Watkin, and celebrity guest judge Donna Hay. <laughs> 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 Newspapers claim Tiger Woods' wife, Elon, will get the largest ever celebrity divorce payout, around $800 million. It's the biggest amount any man has ever paid for sex. <laughs> In return, Elon can't do interviews, books or TV appearances, even if Tiger dies, or she'll lose the lot. But if someone asks, she is allowed to say hot or cold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a flying car goes into production in the US at a cost of just... $228,000. And it has all the safety features you'd expect in a flying car. None. <laughs> On the plus side, it doubles as a very unusual coffin. Has the Tiger Airlines bought one yet? Uh, <laughs> it has a top speed of 180 kilometres an hour in the air, folds up easily into a roadworthy car, and was developed by a man known only as Q. <laughs> The FBI claims to have cracked a Russian spy ring, arresting ten deep-cover suspects after watching them for more than a decade. They were such good sleepers, they slept through the entire Bush administration. <laughs> yeah. You were the only one here alive for that. <laughs> Moscow is outraged. They claim by arresting the spies, the FBI has ruined everything. And with the paint still drying on his office door, new Deputy Prime Minister Wayne Swan makes use of Kevin Rudd's ticket to the G20 summit in Toronto. Swan was a stand-in for Gillard, who was a stand-in for Rudd, 
Who they can't stand. <laughs> Take it away. Gone. So after one global round of Good News Week, the Robins team are on 15 points. The Hooper team, 15 points. Coming up more. Coming up more.